Great. Hello, I will be representing team one and seven uh, with the topic inclusiveness, cohesion within and between regions. And we chose the name uh, one for all for our project uh, because we try to create one system for all the people living in the area despite their different origins and different citizenships. And you can, yeah. Uh, we decided to work on again in the Moistrand region, uh, which is a cross border region between the Netherlands, Germany, and Belgium. Uh, so the challenges we came across with this regional border. Uh, were language barrier, connectivity, and location of opportunities. But the main challenge that we found was the changes in regulations that as we cross the borders from one country to the other, uh, the inhabitants are not always able to access the facilities and services located nearby, but across the borders. So the borders were actually prioritized over convenience. And for example, uh, there is a hospital, Uniklinik, in, located in Germany, and it's only one kilometer away from Dutch border, but uh, yet people living in Dutch side of the border within this one kilometer distance are not able to benefit from the healthcare service of the clinic. Uh, so our aim is to create a borderless living, uh, a common ground for people and a region with no boundary. Um, to achieve this, a funding institution working along with a digital application, which will cater and provide a cohesion between these three countries coordinate and make sure the services and facilities are equally distributed between the inhabitants, irrespective of the bond borders. So uh, we can pass to the next slide. The Sure Network and or uh, Delta Metropole can take the initiative to run the process of managing the common fund of the region. And the universities within the area could take part in the research process to collect data from the public. And in the long run, uh, such an institute can then be implemented all across Eurodelta, especially in the coherence with the Shrewd Roadmap for a borderless, balanced, integrated, inclusive, and sustainable mega region. Um, so, with the project, we believe we can create a common ground for stakeholders and inhabitants. While different stakeholders' benefits are included, the inequality in terms of access of facilities will be overcome and with the help of the share fund system, of course. And um, also uh, the data collected uh, within the, with the digital application that has the potential of uh, break the language barrier we mentioned before, uh, will improve the facility development in line with people's needs and provide economic efficiency uh, with the shared amenities. Uh, so the project, as we said, uh, can be upscale to Euro Delta scale. So the region would uh, work as one, um, but all, uh, despite the country borders, but also it's make it easier uh, with the common fund to apply new decision in the neighborhood levels too. And yeah, to conclude, the, our project aims to make Euro Delta one for all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, interesting. Uh, let's jump to an, an, a very nice uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Um, let's jump to the next team. Um, it would be teammate. Yes, one second. Do you see it? Now we see it. Yes, yes. We see it. perfect. So then good morning also from us and welcome to the Delta Nuts 2040 plus. And um, we are the team eight and build infrastructure, Dominic Kildwager, Maurice Klarme, Wilco Stonebrink, Nahid Nabhan and myself, Marian Gatti. So uh, we would like to show you a little bit how we thought that mobility or mobility patterns and can bring together the physical and formal interconnectedness in the border regions uh, within uh, the Euro Delta. And in order to do so, we are proposing a new territorial nomencl nomenclature for this year, uh, Euro Delta. Uh, maybe in the beginning, we realized that uh, we are, the initial idea is very similar to what the other mobility team proposed, but uh, maybe that also shows that it seems to be a very pressing matter or a very interesting region 
um, to work on. So um, our, um, our initial thought was really that um, if we're looking at the border region in the Euro Delta, um, often they are actually like infrastructure wise or closeness wise, the cities in between, they're very, they're very, they're very close together. But somehow the, the infrastructure between doesn't really lead to the fact that people exchange more or that they um, can yeah, cross the border easily. So um, we thought um, about how or which areas along all these uh, border areas, how they could actually be connected better and, and which areas would actually have to be connected better. And uh, we looked initially at um, the Aachen uh, region because uh, we learned that um, infrastructure wise, it, it's not that uh, badly connected, but actually um, people don't really uh, make this connection function in the region. Um, and so we thought that our um, research perimeter would be the areas along the border lines and think about which regions could be like on a local scale better connected um, in order to increase the connectedness in the whole region and not just like these large transnational um, infrastructure corridors. And, and for the implementation process, I would like to give over to Dominic. Yeah, thank you, Marian, for your introduction. And uh, yeah, I would like to dive uh, deeper into this uh, fuzziness of uh, territorial uh, cohesion, with, which currently exists uh, along the Shore uh, Euro Delta uh, uh, area. And uh, Marian, if you could uh, slide over to. Uh, okay, thank you. And as you see on the bottom, uh, the current situation is that we have kind of a, a rag rock of uh, different uh, territorial levels uh, in regard to the uh, NUTS scale, which is uh, derived, I think, from uh, Eurostat and uh, serves as a basic instrument for uh, uh, the EU and, and the Commission to uh, uh, in, in distinct to uh, uh, distribute the funding. And uh, from the perspective of uh, sure Euro Delta, we thought uh, there is an urgent need of uh, yeah uh, to uh, of collecting a collective uh, collective uh, nomenclature um, across uh, Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, and also France. Um, that all the EU policies uh, really function uh, in in the sure area and uh, with specific focus on the uh, cross-border regions. And uh, therefore we translated the NUT zero level to uh, the whole uh, Eurodelta macro region. And um, where all Eurodelta uh, policies are made, uh, there's an, a general framework uh, existing uh, uh, and tackling issues uh, within all of, of the area. And then, uh, what Marianne uh, introduced, uh, the border buffer zones, uh, which are kind of uh, uh, insufficient from a planning perspective to, to frame it uh, uh, line-wise, but we thought it uh, would be a good start to uh, start cross-border cooperation and uh, to form uh, strategic alliances who can be uh, concretized uh, on the local level, which is uh, the next one. And in the Border buffer zones. Uh, this would also be the level of uh, cohesion funds, whether uh, big funds of uh, the European Structural Fund and uh, the RDF and uh, the other uh, major funds are uh, uh, coming to an effect. And uh, what is our uh, specific focal field would be the special collaboration zone, which is uh, which would. Uh, yeah, ally or combine uh, the nut three levels. And as you can see, those are quite, there's quite a fuzziness existing right now um, uh, uh, within the different countries. And uh, if we could, uh, yeah, uh, fuse them together and uh, yeah, derive a, a common policies framework on, on this level, this would uh, allow targeted uh, cross-border collaboration projects, especially uh, for, for example, that transport authorities should or must uh, work together and uh, uh, offer collaborative projects like uh, bus and uh, rail lines uh, going, going uh, cross-border to connect also uh, 
cities from the hinterland with each other, which are maybe currently not part of any corridor also because right now the focus of research is uh, uh, pretty much circulating around corridor thinking and this would be uh, yeah, an effective method. And also there could be um, the, is the possibility of acquisition uh, of EU project funding from, from different funds. And regarding the landmarks of our vision, uh, we have, uh, as I said, we start with short-term collaboration projects, which could, could be uh, initiated and regi registered uh, right now. And uh, then in 2022, the funding would start, uh, depending on the uh, project period. Uh, in the meantime, um, the institution forming could start, for, for example, uh, Assure Transport Authority or other kinds of uh, institutions uh, uh, really fitting into that uh, nomenclature. And uh, as long-term uh, 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 vision date, we formulated uh, 2040 just as a uh, quick uh, or a rough uh, uh, image uh, of, yeah, that, that Delta nuts could be uh, completed until then. And next slide, please. There's uh, very little time left. So yes. I would like to ask you to, to um, uh, do this quite quick. Yep. Uh, yeah, on the right hand, you see uh, uh, after the theory of central places, uh, how we uh, uh, are want, want to realize that uh, in, in terms of a nut circle. And uh, on the left side, you see the description. So that uh, first of all, the show network is bridging authority between the regional level and the EU level. And uh, that the uh, spe special collaboration zones would consolidate cross-border territorial cohesion, uh, as you could see on the right. And uh, as a next, uh, yeah, the, the show authority could, uh, be delivered new opportunities of intervention and in creating new transport agreements uh, on cross-border public transport uh, uh, fitted to our uh, theme. And uh, yeah, as, as a next step, this uh, special collaboration zones could be uh, um, projected on other areas. For example, uh, uh, between Netherlands and Germany, there are uh, a few uh, other possibilities. So just uh, look for other polycentric urban areas, which could be uh, densified or uh, uh, more brought together through those projects. And uh, yeah, uh, in the end, uh, digest the nut uh, to, to harvest the fruits out of that. Uh, but uh, more of us uh, special collaboration zones would launch projects improving uh, interconnectedness within those uh, ge geographical quite near regions at the moment. But uh, yeah, uh, they, they also should, uh, uh, this connectedness should also be uh, seen by uh, mobility connections. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a nice presentation, very playful uh, title with the nuts. Uh, <laughs> introduction, very good. Um, let's jump to team number nine. The floor is yours. Um, do you see the presentation? Yes, it's not full screen yet. No? Not yet. Can you go on the present? Uh, yes. Oh, then there was a time lag. One second. Um, here, let's go. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, um, so I'm presenting, um, I would like to present our vision uh, from our group for circular economy. So our team is Alvaro, Lauren, me, Quinton and Lea. And um, we would like to invite you to imagine what if we could inventorize all the materials that we have in the Euro Delta. Sounds quite big, right? So let's scale it down. We thought of, okay, let's focus on one sector of the material flows. Um, so we thought of, okay, the building sector, it has the one of the biggest impacts of energy uses and greenhouse emissions. So we would like to focus on the um, building sector, therefore. Um, and to establish, yeah. 
establish a Euro Delta waste stock exchange that is powered by a cloud of elements. So the idea is that we have an input um, of elements and materials. So that can be um, materials like concrete, bricks, or even elements like floors, doors. And um, so we would start with newly constructed buildings that every building delivers a kind of material passport that we would inventorize. And over time, existing buildings could add to their to this material list. So in a way, we would create this digital space, the cloud of elements, a kind of a database where people through the waste stock exchange could um, purchase things or um, yeah, purchase things basically. And while we thought only knowing what is there is not enough because if you know what is there but you don't know what to do with it, um, we thought that an important aspect of this cloud is we need a driver and that is material research that we know what to do with waste materials and how to deal with quality decrease. So in a way to develop new ways of material processing and also to develop technologies on recycling and reuse in cooperation with universities. Um, one important, the last important aspect is actually also to get the architects on board. And for example, together with the new European Bauhaus to develop new aesthetics of reuse. Um, and the second part is the incentives. So we, that, for example, future EU policies on re sustainable recycling quota or a CO2 price tag could add to the motivation of using waste materials. Um, coming to the waste stock exchange, um, we, what we imagine is that the price creation is based on the CO2 emission. And the CO2 emission is based, first of all, on the level, how much you can reuse a material or recycle. And that depends on the quality of the material. And the second most important aspect is the transportation, um, which is one of the biggest CO2 emission um, causers. Um, and that is um, that dominates also the, the price creation. And this very digital or non-physical space um, has a very spatial dimension. And that is, um, we, we saw that it requires certain um, spatial um, starting points that, well, we see that the urban areas, cities are the perfect market for this, for this idea that we have a very big demand on newly new constructions, um, but at the same time, it is also a great resource of materials and elements. Um, and the third is that in cities, um, we have data centers, which we can use for this cloud and also to look at this data center from a cir circular perspective that we can also reuse the heat that is produced by the data center for the city. So from this stock exchange market, we can use this material um, to, for private and commercial usages. So people, um, so citizens can access the stock, this waste stock exchange to uh, renovate their own buildings, but also as new concepts of living like fle with flexible floor plans and for example, high rises where living spaces should be adapted. They can more easily access materials to change their own living environments. And at the same time, um, businesses can also use these, um, these materials. So we thought, we thought, okay, let's, that sounds pretty big. Let's scale it down and take one city as a starting point. And we thought of, um, to take Amsterdam because it has on the one hand circular ambitions and the harbor is um, in, in for the future dedicated as a circ circular hub. So we thought, okay, that's a good starting point. And we have data centers in the city. So let's start here. Um, and we, what, we, what we imagine over time is that um, we start small. So we start from the neighborhood which where people can access this material database and can purchase things for their own environment, but it can, and then it grows over time where businesses um, can use, 
um, propose bigger building materials and can use it again. And it can grow bigger to regions. And as the network grows, it also they merge and also the materials that are proposed there also grow. Um, and I would like to give over to my colleague, Quinta. Thank you, Tanya. Um, this project is uh, for everyone, but our stakeholders are mainly involved in the uh, construction industry. Given the focus of the project, we stress the need for desires to be on board. So we're talking about spatial developers, architects, and construction engineers. And later on, other eccentrics like uh, entrepreneurs, uh, creative people, and uh, technology leaders like universities uh, are integrated to further realize um, and improve the use of uh, new materials. So what we actually want to do is constantly enlarge our um, yeah our data set of materials we have, and that can be in the in the exchange. Uh, so what are the following steps? Um, the material database collection needs to be transparent and accessible to everyone. And it should be framed like a marketplace that puts buyers and sellers in close connection. And if, so a buyer could be um, your neighbor, but it can also be a large construction uh, um, player. And uh, the inventorization needs to be put in place in a pilot city. So we chose Amsterdam, but, it, uh, but at the same time, this could take place at, at Keulen, at Brussels, uh, at London. And, um, and this would slowly grow. Um, a strategic location is chosen, as explained before, uh, because of the waterways and a, a freight uh, multimodal transport opportunities. We already identified some issues and that's getting the architects involved. They have to be en enthusiastic for, uh, for, the inter yeah, for this. And um, we have to overcome asymmetric information um, because of uh, data privacy of the construction uh, players. Um, next slide, please. And please think of the time. Uh, yeah. It's already up. Thank you. So the construction industry is responsible for a large amount of energy use as explained. And um, our proposal a market platform for exchanging uh, transparently at all scales, reusable waste materials of this sector uh, it will boost the Euro Delta identity feeling, uh, macro region economic uh, prospects, and both local and EU ecological uh, goals. And this platform can be adapted at many geographical scales. So depending on what kind of exchanges you want within the built industry or within the food industry or uh, energy infrastructure, um, it, it's, it's, it's just the level that you're looking at. So... Um, so we start from cities and we start within exchanges between neighborhoods and local companies, but also just within uh, between people. And um, yeah, it would, allow, it would allow companies across the whole Euro Delta to interact very easily and people across the Euro Delta to interact very easily. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much to both. Uh, very interesting topic, um, very good choice. Data, space, people, economies. Nice. Uh, let's go to team 10. The floor is yours, team 10. Thank you very much. Um, can you see my screen now? Yeah, but it's not on full screen yet. Yeah. That comes right now. Yes, thank you. Super, so thanks for having us. We are team 10. Uh, my name is Mauricio and I'm going um, to present our work. Uh, it's called Energy Pedals and with me uh, is our Julia and Yan Zhao. And um, I'm going to present our vision. So what we have here is actually this, um, this form of a flower with different petals. And that uh, symbolizes what we want uh, to analyze or how we want to analyze in the energy sector. Um, we want to propose not a definite solution, but uh, better said, um, a form of analysis of a decentralized energy system in which uh, cities can collaborate among them 
and in which in, in this process they are going to interchange in a fair way uh, services and um, will have definitely a co-design collaboration scheme um, for er energy creation, er energy generation, sorry, and distribution. And uh, for that, we have chosen as, as an area, the Rotterdam uh, region. So we are at the scale of the, re of the region. And um, there we have some satellite cities around them. So in this way, we have this flower we're talking about with Rotterdam as a city uh, center or the bulb and the different petals around, which are the satellite cities and all of them um, serving each other in, uh, with the purpose of not only satisfying energy needs, but also taking into, consider into consideration the climate action um, necessities. So um, for this, we have thought that there are, uh, we need a, a broader band of, of actors um, and stakeholders, not only from the energy perspective or climate perspective, but really a larger network that could help us to create actually this, this vision. Um, as I said, we see it more as a decentralized way uh, of energy, which is not a definite solution, but um, tries to show how we can actually see at cities um, from the energy perspective. And for that, then we have identified that there are already some organizations, some networks that are working in some type of schemes or developments uh, that can help us. And for that, um, we have found Energy Cities, the Transition Network, uh, ECLE, of course, um, the Drift Institute in the Erasmus Rotterdam Institute, uh, University. And um, we see a very big um, importance of workshop fac facilitators because um, as I said, we see this as a process of co-design or of collaboration in which we have to engage a lot of people. Um, to include a part of actually um, more objective um, uh, support in different topics, we are ex uh, including external consultants in different um, aspects. So for example, law, urban landscape designers, natural resources management, ecologists, hydrologists, and of course, in the energy sector. Um, we, of course, include as stakeholders, the uh, policymakers from the different regions and countries, and of course, uh, province officials. Um, this is very important for us, especially in the policymakers, because um, this would probably have a lot to do with the policymaking between countries, because we want to create also cross-border uh, cross projects. Um, for this, to idealize the timeline, we have said that in year 2021, we are going to start defining a common vision on this energy bulb with the first five cities um, nearby Amsterdam, uh, nearby Rotterdam that we want, want to include. Then by 2025, we will have defined and agree on roles uh, for each city. Uh, definitely um, in the energy aspect, we will have measured and defined uh, the capacities and the needs that we have for each one. And then we included in 2027, the start of a pilot project in which we will start testing our first, um, first definitions and first approach. And for that, during these next three years, we will have the ability to see what's going on. Um, be able to correct what's not working and change a little bit things if necessary. So by year 2030, we will- well, you have to uh, uh, um, do a break. Think of the time, it's, uh, it's almost up. Yep. So okay. by 2030, we will start the infrastructure changes in the whole region that we're speaking about. So Rotterdam and the five cities. And then for 2050, we will have that expanded to the full Euro Delta region. If we think, Long, uh, longer in time, then we can say that we, uh, we can include this in a mega region and of course in the rest of Europe if all the policies and, um, and the energy, uh, energy capacity is, uh, is worked in, in, in this project. So that was it. Um, I think um, for the first, uh, as an additional impact, we have to say that 
we see a lot of importance in the cross-border region because there we can uh, make we can help satellite cities that are in the borders to benefit from the region and from the electricity and energy available cross-border and not um, necessarily in, inside the country that that might be actually difficult to, to reach. And um, as we have said, we, we work in a, in a regional um, scale and that we see as a very scale up process to a region level or from where we can also take lessons learned and work on the local level. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. A beautiful final map with a lot of flowers. Very nice. Um, we have one more team. Um, I invite team 12 to the floor. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Uh, you have to do, yes, the other one, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Leah, and together with Yasmin, Taif, Li Sheng, and Serkan, we were focusing on the topic of digitalization and post COVID strategies for the Euro Delta region. And um, we started our discussion with the question of what the Corona crisis means for the development of future urban cities, uh, future cities. And what we can see is that the topic of um, developing health promoting cities is becoming more and more important. And uh, that cities should be developed that they are um, healthy for the inhabitants. And healthy cities includes all the mentioned um, aspects that the other groups are working on, like climate, energy, mobility, every, everything is connected. And what we also can see that the awareness of people um, is rising to the topic of um, spatial planning issues because they are more affected through the COVID crisis. So they, stay more folk, they are more interested in um, public spaces, green areas and all this. And additionally, th through the pandemic, um, the topic of digitalization is rising because it's a driving factor for current developments. And we try to get a link through all these different points. And out of this, we created the vision for the Euro Delta. We want that the Euro Delta is becoming an inclusive and connected region that offers future-proof, sustainable, and smart, smart solutions without any borders. And to reach this and to create a link between all these mentioned points, we want to create a digital platform. This is UR Delta. Uh, it's a mobile phone-based application that can be used by everyone. Okay, you can go on. Um, our application is a digital participation, knowledge, knowledge and exchange platform. And um, the target is to bring citizens, planners, the government and all the other stakeholders together in one virtual public space uh, to create a lively exchange about spatial planning topics. And what is really important is that in this application, it's possible to create, uh, to connect all the different topics that are um, create, uh, connected with a urban system and also like we can connect everyone like all the citizens from all over the world can take part and also there is no difference between the urban and the rural the countryside regions so we will try to connect everything together um, the application contains up-to-date maps about um, and information about existing ideas visions and strategies for the future for the euro delta regions that are made by experts so the experts will put the, uh, the, their ideas into this application and the users can uh, react to that, to, can take part, they can post pictures, discuss about ideas, uh, share their own needs and ideas so that we have a new form of participation and we have a good uh, big process of discussion. And um, to start the application, um, we choose the region of the South Netherlands, but it's just an um, example region because of course an application is not limited to any administration administrative borders and our goal is that the application will work in the whole Euro Delta region and maybe someday it will spread to the whole world and i forgot one, th one thing to say like um, 
we want to make possible that everyone from the region, all the young people, all the interested people can take part in shaping the future and can help to uh, develop healthy cities because everyone is um, uh, connected with that. To make the application working, we want to give the responsibility to the SURE network. And um, we see it as important because the SURE network has an um, overview about all the uh, plans that are already existing. They know what is going on in the region. So we want to give the responsibility to them that they are the, the ones that keep the application running. And the picture on the left side shows you how it's working. Like, we have the city, the high, uh, it's a high sensitive complex with all the different topics that you can see, mobility, economy, water management. And to these topics, like the experts can share their ideas and already existing plans and strategies and people can react to that. And we want to create a discussion. Um, as a application should start in this region of South Netherlands, we see the local government also responsible for that. But later in the process when the application will work on a bigger scale uh, we can imagine that on the U european union level for example the program of um, the digital europe program can be important to uh, keep this project running and to fund it and that also the governments in different regions uh, can contrib contrib contribute their ideas um, additionally, we see universities, local initiatives like startup incubators, neighborhood um, organizations as important stakeholders. Um, if we have a look on the timeline, you can see that first of all, the framework of the application has to be set up, of course. And after that, we, the application UR Delta will be used in the pilot region and spreading slowly to the whole UR Delta region. As you can see in 2030, we already expect some transformations in, in regions that are stimulated by the ideas of the out of the discussions in these applications. And we can also imagine that some additional services can be added to the application. For example, it could be a voting platform for some dis decisions on the munici municipal or regional levels. And then later on the application could spread to other regions in the whole world so that in maybe in 2017 it's a network that is will be used worldwide and create a big um, network about spatial planning topics and maybe it can help to reach our goal that the world is inclusive sustainable and healthy in 2100 okay we can ask us which impact our application can bring to the development of the euro delta so again, regarding to the topic of COVID and about the health development, um, it could be really interesting because we can allow everyone to get in touch with each other in a virtual public space and uh, it allows social interaction. So even in times of isolation, people are stay connected. And um, also like we create a big uh, network for spatial planning topics. And this can impact the mental health and also the physical health of the cities and inhabitants, because through these discussions, we will see some changes in regions and cities in different scales. Um, the whole process can be um, discussed on different scales. Like it can be just focused on the neighborhood level, on a street, like locals can have sh share their ideas and work with local planners, but also we can have a big network on a really big scale worldwide so that cities can uh, improve their connections and their cooperation. And in total, it can rise the acceptance of play spatial planning processes through the extensive participation. And we really believe that the UR Delta application can play an important role in achieving our goals for the mega region Euro Delta. Creating the network is one of the most important things for that. And together we can create a future-proof Euro Delta region that is healthy, sustainable, and smart. And everyone can take part. So take part and be part of UR Delta. Thank you. <laughs>